hey guys it's KD and welcome back to GetUtilized.com now in this video I'll be showing you how to make the simplest ever line follower robot with the help of Arduino Uno now any parts you see in this video are fairly available on www.vegarobokit.com for reasonable prices and this is a sponsored video by Vega Robokit so let's begin line follower robot so the first thing you will be needing is the chassis now this is a chassis with two tires and one caster wheel in front now these are uh, 6200 rpm motors but any uh, motors with a speed range till 200 rpm are fine for a line follower robot i have also soldered the wires on the motors and brought them up and this is an assembled chassis so no problem at all if you don't know how to assemble this chassis there we have a video so the next thing is Arduino Uno now we need uh, two spacers like this to keep it away from the metal chassis of the robot also screws are required the next thing is IR sensors or infrared sensors now these infrared sensors have two infrared LEDs one of them is TX that is a transmitter LED and the second one is the RX now these type of sensors also give an analog output as well as an digital output fairly cheap two of them you may also need a motor driver IC now I'll be using IC L298N now this IC has a current consuming capacity of 4 amperes so you know you can also use motors with metal gear shafts and high current consuming motors so the basic reason of using this thing is your Arduino only gives a pulse of 5 volts but what if we want to run motors of higher voltage like uh, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 18 volts for that reason we need a motor driver IC so here are all the motor inputs and here you can give a 12 volt or a 9 volt input for your motor and these pins are inputs from your Arduino Uno I'll be getting into this later you may also need a 9 volt battery as we will be powering our Arduino and all the sensors with a 9 volt battery you also need a couple of cable ties and buck like this or the straight ones will also work you also need female to female connector or jumper pins like this mm, 10 of them would be fine a piece of cardboard like this you may also need a mini breadboard with a double side tape on it now as I said earlier I would be powering my Arduino Uno with a 9 volt battery so here is a 9 volt battery strapper battery strap or whatever you call it and a DC jack so I'll be connecting the DC jack to my Arduino Uno and this thing goes to the 9 volt battery now I have also extended two more wires which would be drawing the voltage in parallel these two wires would be going to my motor driver IC power and ground so these things will be also powering your Arduino Uno your sensors and as well as your motors so make sure you have a rechargeable or a heavy duty 9 volt battery a metal strip like this and also a few couple of nuts and bolts so the first thing we'll be doing is placing your Arduino Uno on the chassis now as I said earlier we have spacers over here there you go it's fixed very firmly so now we can easily connect the USB and the power jack so the next thing we have to do is take this cardboard piece place it over here place this motor driver IC over here and the reason there is no holes on this particular PCB so I'll be using cable ties to tie this thing 
of the PCB. The cardboard I think is a bit bigger, much bigger. So I'll just cut off this thing. So done with the motor driver I see. Now the next thing I'll be doing is placing this mini PCB over here. A mini breadboard over here. Done with that. So now the next thing we'll be doing is we have three holes over here and I'll be taking this metal strip and aligning three holes and with the help of some nuts and bolts I'll be connecting these two sensors over here and here as simple as that so let's get this thing done okay so here we go we are done with the assembly part of this robot I have attached a 9 volt battery over here simply with the help of a cable tie now these are four wires of the motors I have rooted them through these four holes and I have brought them up over here because we need to connect them to this motor terminals of the motor driver I see so I have also attached some bug strips to the mini breadboard and here are your two sensors this is the main uh, metal strip now this is a very long bolt I have used no need to use such a long bolt and I have used a tiny nut over here as a spacer which will separate the, this metal PCB over here and the PCB contacts of this sensor over here so basically now we need uh, three wires from the sensor digital output ground and positive same goes for this one i'll be also inserting uh, similar bug strips on the arduino uno so that's all from the assembly point of view of this robot so let's get over with the connections part so let's begin with the connections of this thing now the first thing I'll be doing is pulling out the wires from the motors and attaching it to the output of the motor driver IC now here we have motor 1 and motor 2 consider our left motor as motor 1 and right motor as motor 2 and over here we have these four terminals as motor 1 1 1 2 2 1 and 2 2 now why do you need four connections now this is a motor 1 and which corresponds to motor 1 1 and 1 2 what if you want to take your bot in the forward direction take this particular motor motor 1 in the forward direction I will give a digital right high to motor 1 1 what if I want to take it in a backward direction I would give a digital right high to M12 pin over here as simple as that same goes for motor 2 which is your right motor which is connected over here now here is the motor 2-1 pin what if I want to drive this motor in the forward direction I'll give a digital right high to this pin M21 what if I want to take this in the backward direction I would give a digital right high to M22 see as simple as that so now let's first connect this output terminals of your motor one by one we may need to you know switch these terminals or change the coding depending on what direction you want the motor to go so this is experimentation you will come to know exactly when you are doing it yourself now practically 
so we have connected the motor so now this is our custom made jack which I'll connect over here the ground the black wire will go to the ground over here I'll just tighten up this thing and the plus will go to the VDD as simple as that now let's come to this part of your circuit so uh, as you can see I have added four box strips over here for the motor connection and these are the two sensor connection and these are the power connections so I'll be writing program for motors for pin number 8, 9, 10 and 11 so my left motor shall be motor 1 and that is pin number 8 and 9 so 8 will go to M11, 9 will go to M12 so let's try this thing pin number 8 motor 1, 2 Pin number 10 that shall be your right motor, motor 2. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, there we go. Now, what about? powering this IC so here is it here is the VCC pin of the IC and here is the ground pin of the IC which will help the IC decide the logic based on its thing so every IC needs a power so now these are two rails over here one shall be negative the other one shall be positive which I shall be pulling out the positive 5 volts from over here and the ground from over here because we need to power up the IC so one ground and one 5 volts will go to the IC one will go to the sensor and the second one will go to the the third one will go to this sensor so let's power up this things ground and this is the ground rail over here plus 5 volts from the Arduino ho, ho, ho. Are we firm on that? Yes. So now this whole rail becomes of life positive 5 volts. And what all the things do we want to power up? First one is this, this first sensor. Then I'll go for the positive of second sensor. Then let's do the connections of ground of both the sensors. Oh, sorry, black wire. Color codes play an integral part in electronics as well as you know, recognition is pretty easy. So, done with powering the sensors. Now, let's go ahead and power up the IC. This is a big one. So I'll just pull these things up.
there we go we have powered up your IC now the last thing remains is the digital output which the sensor would be giving shall be routed to the digital input pins on your Arduino so that is pin number 6 and 7 so let the left sensor be pin number 6 so we will be writing programs for pin number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 2 for the sensors and 4 for the motors So here we go, we have done with all the connections, maybe I'll upload a fridging diagram if this circuitry is available, if that this L2981 is available on fridging, I need to check about it. So let's repeat this whole circuit. Here we have our main power source to which we will be routed to jack and the IC L298 which is the motor driver IC and this especially the voltage and the current will be used for the motors so here are all the four outputs of the motors here are the four, four data inputs for the motor driver IC here is the powering thing of the motor driver IC now everything is drawn from the 5 volts rail on your Arduino and I have made two extra rails with the help of this mini breadboard so pin number 8 to 11 are the four motor output data pins from your Arduino which go to the input of the motor driver IC for logic processing. Sensors. Left sensor is on pin number 6. Right sensor is on pin number 7. You don't need PWM. You, it, is, it is just giving a high or low. So now uh, let's uh, get to know a few things about this IR sensor module. Now here is a tiny info or data sheet about this thing. It is a 4-in-1 sensor module which can be used for line following, obstacle detection, avoided, also used for light and fire. Now here is the scenario. If it is on white, say this white surface, then the LED on the sensor will glow on and the output is logic zero logic zero means low as simple as that the second scenario if it is on the black line if this sensor is on a black line and there is no obstacle or dark or there is lag or there is no fire then LED will be off and the logic one that means it will give a high output to your Arduino Uno so if it is on white it will give a low if it is on black it will give high as simple as that and here are the four pin configs plus plus positive 5 volts VCC ground digital output and analog output so that's it for the sensors and that's it for the bot let's power up this thing okay okay here we go your Arduino is powering up for experimental purposes I generally use a clone Arduino so now let's get this thing programmed the code is pretty easy planning I'll will be doing the explanation of the code so let's get to the coding part we'll connect the USB burn the code and just make this spot to follow a line 